Uh, my name is George R. R. Martin, and I'm from uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, originally Bayo, New Jersey, and in the middle of Dubuque, Iowa for a few years. Yes, welcome back. So my question for you, I guess, is pr pretty much has to do with this. Howard, Howard Waldrop was a writer of this short story, correct? And you, you guys That's right. Howard and I have known each other since 1963 when we were both in junior high school and John Fitzgerald Kennedy was in the White House. So, um, I remember the story going somehow you were in New Jersey and he was in Texas. I was in Bayonne, New Jersey, where I was born and raised, and he was in Arlington, Texas. Um, but I, we were both comic book fans, and I was trying to complete my collection, and he had an issue I wanted, so I bought it from him for a quarter. Um, we actually mailed quarters in those days. That's how you took a quarter and you taped it to an index card because you didn't want it bouncing around. And then you put it inside an envelope and it, it put a three cent stamp on it and your quarter would come at the other end. And we, in comic fandom, we call them sticky quarters. A lot of people wrote fanzines and sold them for sticky quarters. But in that case, I was just buying a comic from Howard. But when he sent it, he sent me a letter. I said, hi, who are you? Uh, and we started talking about authors we love and comics we love, and it turned out he was an aspiring writer, I was an aspiring writer. We corresponded for nine years until we actually met, and then we, that was, even that was half a century ago, so we've known each other since. But Howard Waldrop is one of the originals. He is probably the best short story writer in science fiction and fantasy, and has been for 30, 40 years. Um, he's written a uh, hundred stories, and uh, Every one of them is different from all of the others. He never repeats himself. He never does a series character or anything like that. He's, and he does stories that nobody else could possibly do. And I, I thought some of them deserve to be translated to film so a wider audience of people could uh, you know, enjoy the movies and then hopefully go back and read some of Howard's books. Um, the, Night of the Cooters that we uh, just showed here is the first of those films and we have a couple more in production and a couple more slated so. So when it comes to writing a screenplay versus writing science fiction, it, it takes a special skill to get into screenwriting. You, you're able to do both pretty much. Well I have done both but I'm yeah. not doing much screenwriting anymore. I mean I, there were yeah. 10 years back in the 80s and 90s when I was spending 10 10 months of every 12 in Hollywood, I was working on TV shows, Twilight Zone, Beauty and the Beast, writing movies, did a lot of screenplays. But these days I do mostly books, but I work with other writers on shows like uh, Dark Winds, House of the Dragon, and I read the scripts and I give notes, but I'm not writing the scripts myself. I'm concentrating on my novel. Okay, got it. Uh, can you tell us a little something about the Julian Dubuque Film Festival? Maybe why, why it is you're, you're able to come back here? Why, why you made it a Well, of course, I had to tie to Dubuque because I lived here and taught at Clark years ago. And when we finished uh, Night of the Cooters, uh, it's a short film, 34 minutes long. Um, you don't sell that to a distributor and put it in movie theaters. You enter it in film festivals. And that was all new to me, even though I worked for 10 years in Hollywood. I never did the film festival. There's a whole different world here. So I looked at all the lists of there are hundreds of film festivals and tried to pick ones and I said, oh, look, Dubuque. I could get, get back to Dubuque. I could have Mulgrew's Chili and ride to Fenelon Place Elevator and see some old friends. Okay, my last five questions for you, quick ones. <laughs> the senses we have, sight, taste, touch, smell. Can you tell us your favorite sense is here in Dubuque. Taste being Mulgrews, obviously. You already covered that. Okay, taste uh, would be Mulgrews, and there were a few other things. Okay. Uh, sight. Um, I would have to say the sight from the top of the Fenelon Place elevator, where the whole city is uh, spread out under, underneath you. Smell, well, I lived here in the 70s. There was the pack. <laughs> and also sound. You could hear from where I lived, like at 2 o'clock in the morning, some train would come howling up, and then you would hear them driving the pigs through the streets to the packing plant to be turned into debut cams. And you could hear, <laughs> that's a sound, yeah, uh, hundreds of squealing pigs <laughs> on their way to their doom. <laughs>